Cases of COVID are exploding in India and the healthcare system there, which is actually not too bad, is crumbling. Uh, what can be done to ease the pressure and the distress being felt by the country? What can we do? What can the world do? Can they do anything? Uh, joining us now is someone who has an insight, World Health Organisation spokesperson, Dr Margaret Harris. Margaret, hello. Good morning from New Zealand. Good morning, Duncan, and great to be with you in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. it's good to have you too, except in such a, such a, a terrible time for India. How mm. bad? Can you give us a scale of this, some perspective from the WHO perspective? Well, it's a very, very intense conflagration, really. I mean, over the last week, we saw over 2 million cases reported to us and more than 15,000 deaths. Uh, what's probably more important is what you see the increase, which was 50% increase in cases and a 90% increase in deaths. So the tra trajectory of their uh, pandemic right now is straight up. But the most important thing is it also can come straight down. What really needs to be done now are a really serious public health social measures and to step up the vaccination. And I think the vaccination rate was, as I looked at this yesterday, was 1.5% of the country, so a really low vaccination rate. And it must be one of the most difficult countries to socially distance and isolate yourself in because of the how populated it is. So how do you do it properly and how do you get to compliance? Well, exactly. But remember, uh, India is a very large country, very diverse, with very different. So first of all, you have to work out where your your intense transmission is. And if it's so transmit, it's so intense that you can't actually track the virus, then you have to look at, at severe measures like lockdowns. But it's better to do localised lockdowns and to ensure that you really support people when you do them. Also, it's really important to set up quarantine centres so that if you need to put people in quarantine, again, you can support them with food and with other things. Likewise, with all the people sort of flooding the hospitals, the important thing is, again, to try to have localised community triage. So you can work out who really needs to go to hospital and who can be managed at home and how to get the support to them. It all sounds enormously difficult, but it can be done. It requires a lot of mobilisation of resources. And we at WHO are sending a lot of P, uh, equipment, a lot of supplies, and we've also repurposed 2,600 of our people to work intensely on this. Le leadership matters at times like this, and, and I, I know their Prime Minister... Uh, was encouraging people to go to the, the recent festival. So, you know, millions of, of, of Indians turned up at the, all these different religious festivals and, you know, whining, dining, swimming, eating, whatever they were doing. And it was the wrong thing to do in the middle of a pandemic. Why couldn't someone tap him on the shoulder and say, Oi, not good enough, stop it? I think there was a little bit of a tapping, but the problem, as you've as many people have seen around the world, is there is this kind of idea, it's all going to be over and we're going to go back to what we did before. I think New Zealand has worked out that that doesn't work. And you've, you've, you've set a great example with the many things you've done and the care you've taken about gently opening up, not rushing into anything, and understanding that we are facing a new world. This pandemic has changed the way we are. We do want to be together, but we want to find ways to be together safely, not go back to jamming ourselves together and encouraging viruses to rip through our populations. The outlook for India then, so what, what is the worst case scenario if they don't get on top of this? Because I can't find many experts around who say that they've got this under control. Well, certainly it's... A huge outbreak and because it's a huge population and it's running through those populations and it's got to the stage that we always said don't let it get to where your health system is overwhelmed and you quite rightly said they have a good health system they've got some of the most brilliant doctors in the world they've got great technology and it shows it can happen anywhere uh, but the one beacon of hope is this virus can be turned around very quickly if you do those public health social measures seriously and not just rely on the vaccines. Now, the vaccines will in the long term help, but it takes a long time. And 118 million people have had a vaccination, mostly the first dose in India, but only 
21 million are fully vaccinated. That's less than 2% of the population. So to get that size of population vaccinated, that's a long-term project. Right now, it's a public health social measures, which again, I, I keep telling you how great you are, but New Zealand has really shown that it can be done. Are, are we seeing, just, just um, India aside, just generally looking at this pandemic, are we putting, and I say, as I say, putting India to one side, America, Britain, uh, Australia, Canada, it's all trending, you know, the graphs are all trending the right way, the stats are looking better. Uh, America, there's been some really big uh, developments in the past sort of six weeks. Are we through this? No. As a world, we're not. At the moment, in fact, the numbers we're seeing, the cases, the, the deaths are higher than at any other time in the pandemic. We saw last week, it just took a week to do numbers that it took six months to do last year. I, I, I was actually doing an interview with one of your sister um, broadcasters, and I was looking at the numbers, and I thought, no, that can't be right. So, but the countries you list have been doing the right thing, and the, but the critical thing is to continue to do the right thing. This is where it's hard. People are tired. People say, well, look, I've been really good. Can't I have my reward now? Your reward is that you've learned something very important. You've learned how to control the deadliest threat that's faced our generation. When you say, and you said this at the start of the interview as well, that um, you know the world is not going back to where it's been before, are you saying that we'll never go back to having these big events or, or are you just saying that for now we're not going to have these events but the world will return to normal in the years ahead but just not right now? We will have big events but different events. Uh, I, the, the events where we jammed ourselves into places were probably not good, ju not just from an infectious disease perspective but also from, you know, disasters, the stampedes, the other things that have gone wrong, uh, the fighting between groups. There are all sorts of reasons why we can do those things better. And, and this has just really put an impetus on us. Uh, things like also how we've managed the ventilation in our buildings, how we've crowded ourselves into ever smaller spaces. All those things we will need to change because this won't be the last infectious uh, new pathogen that jumps from the animal kingdom to the human kingdom. Mm. We're encroaching on nature more and more. So... We've got to get better at how we live. Are you saying that there won't be big mass concerts? There's 80,000 people at Wembley listening to saying, I don't know, Rolling Stones or something. Are you, are you saying that we'll be wearing masks well into the future, that there won't be these big um, events? Not necessarily so. For instance, you have your big events outdoors. That's already a plus. But not quite as jammed, perhaps. Maybe you will have fewer, your numbers won't be as large. You, you will set them up in a way that, that respects the, sort of the health situation, the safety situation a little better. Uh, it, it, all these things are things we all now need to be talking about and thinking. We love to be together. You just mentioned the Rolling Stones and I had memories from my youth. Um, so, yes, we, we, we all love those things and we all love to be together, but the, the trick is to be together safe. So does COVID go away? I mean, is it, or is it like influenza? That it's always going to be here. Does COVID go? We've had so much of it now. It, we expect that there's, it, there's so much virus now in our population. We've probably missed the time where we could get rid of it completely. Uh, in the early days, yes, you can push a new pathogen back into the animal kingdom by limiting its opportunity to transmit from person to person. But now we've seen such huge numbers. We would expect that this is a virus that will be with us, but that doesn't mean that the current um, measures we have to stay, take to stop it will be the measures we have to continue. You know, we will ultimately get vaccinated. We will have boosters. We will have... Um, programs that protect us just like we do with the flu vaccine but that is something for the coming years mm. and and one of the big things our scientists are working on is exactly that what kind of vaccination will be the most appropriate in the long term mm. 